For this video, I'll be breaking down what the role of a switch is and the importance of these networking devices on a network. I'll also be dropping three key differences between layer two and layer three switches to help explain this topic a little more in depth. Also, be sure to stick around to the end where I share my troubleshooting tip on layer two connectivity issues that really helped me out when I got started. I'm Network Ninja. If you don't know, I started this channel to build a community of IT pros all trying to boss up their IT skills by training on a consistent and frequent basis so that we can all grow personally and professionally at the highest level. First, let's begin with what a switch is. A switch can be defined as a networking device that connects multiple devices together on a network with the purpose of forwarding the traffic of those devices between them. Which leads me to my first key difference, which is the layers of operation. This, it's the OSI model. You will need to commit that model to memory as it will be used throughout your IT career. This model is how we're able to conceptualize the logical aspect of computer networking. This model is made up of seven layers, all which depend on either the layer above it or below it for proper communication, both between devices and within the device itself. For the purposes of this video, we'll only focus on layers two and three of this model, as they're the most relevant to the topic and are the primary differences between them. So let's dive deeper into the logic of this model and isolate the layers, starting with layer two. Layer two switches are operating at the data link layer. So all this means is not only is the switching capability happening at the hardware, hardware level with ASIC technology, at this layer the devices are using their MAC addresses to communicate and forward the data packets between themselves. So it's completely ignorant of IP addresses at this level or at this layer I should say if that makes sense. I hope hopefully that makes sense. As for layer three switches they're operating at the layer above layer two and this is known as the network layer so this layer doesn't only use mac addresses but it also uses ip addresses to forward those packets another key difference is going to be routing capabilities so layer two switches they don't have routing capabilities they only have like i said those switching capabilities that's all that they're built for that's all that they understand is just mac addresses and how to move the data which is frames at that at that layer again just saying that they have switching capabilities all this means is that they can only forward the data that has the burned in physical mac address on the nick of whatever node is trying to communicate on the network layer three switches can connect and communicate with other routers in the network Remember that routers connect networks together with the purpose of forwarding the, that kind of traffic. And that traffic, network traffic, is layer 3 traffic, and that's known as packets. Since these switches can make routing decisions based on IP addresses, they can also implement routing protocols that we talked about before, like your EIGRPs, OSPFs, and BGP, basically those multiple network protocols that Cisco is able to do. And finally, we got VLANs and QoS. So layer two switches are able to create and manage VLANs, which VLANs, all they do are, they just segment your network into smaller broadcast domains. This is great for traffic management and security. That, that's what you want to do. You don't want to have this, what they call a flat network where there's no separation. You got everybody plugs into the switch. You got your HR department, uh, can see the um, finance department's files and the finance department has access and everything to the, your IT department's part of the network. You, you want to kind of segment that out so you have better traffic management and of course security. On the other hand, you got layer three switches that also support VLANs and QoS which enables prioritizing different types of traffic such as your voice or your video to ensure that mission critical traffic is delivered in a timely manner. Uh, you're gonna have to get used to QoS, you're gonna have to get used to listening to all these acronyms and breaking them down. So QoS just stands for quality of service. 
And again, that's all that means is it's prioritizing the traffic, like your voice traffic or your video traffic. These are critical traffic uh, for your applications to work, for stuff like YouTube and stuff like video traffic to work. It has to be prioritized. Right now, this is the bonus part. Before I end the video, I just wanted to share my troubleshooting tip for layer two devices. So let me explain it a little bit. Um, yeah, I guess give some context on it. So when I first began networking, I was taught to work this OSI model from the bottom up of that stack so I can isolate connectivity issues. So layer one and layer three were easy for me to understand when I was troubleshooting, but you can't skip the layers. That was the whole point. Um, if you're going to troubleshoot layer one, the next layer is layer two and then layer three. Same way if you're going to troubleshoot layer three, if that was working and there's still no connectivity, you have to work work it down if you're going to work it from top to bottom which isn't recommended but basically people are doing but so i'll give you an example so if or not if i was on the desk had a knock and i get a call there's a device typical call for a knock tech and there's no network connection for the device so my first step is let's check the physical layer right that's easy um, power cabling etc if all that's good I'll immediately try to just ping the device well what's your IP address on the network so I can find you and see if that part works maybe it's your source wherever you're trying to ping from or whatever there might be something else happening right so um, you can't just jump to layer 3 and ping something without checking layer 2 so what tool or option could I use to verify the health of layer 2 um, and I didn't have any tools in my tool bag or any knowledge so to me what I came up with the easiest way to isolate this issue is to verify with the end user that's calling in or the tech or whoever I'm working with is I start hitting them with this famous question is the connectivity issue affecting one device or many device devices I should say this is important right because this way we're able to know if the device itself as far as like the networking hardware like the NIC maybe the, the TCP IP stack is misconfigured or there might be something wrong with that specific device where that MAC address lives and it's not working properly and somebody needs to verify the integrity of that NIC. Even if it was a server as well, you could do this with servers. They need, the server team needs to verify the integrity of that NIC through their server logs and stuff before they just push it on to you as a network te technician. They're skipping their steps too. You have to hold them accountable for that. So if more than one device on a network is affected, then we can all assume that that network is down and we can begin troubleshooting that layer three, asking for the IP address of the maybe the default gateway of that network. But I hope all of that made sense and I hope that helps somebody sometime. That's the point of all these videos. So there you have it. T shooting tip straight from the network ninja. I gave you the top three key differences between layer two and layer three switches. Understanding these fundamental differences is important in building your skills and knowledge for this CCNA exam and for success in your career, in my opinion. Keep in mind, too, that Layer 2 is just suitable for smaller networks and Layer 3 is more suitable for your larger networks that require advanced features such as VLANs and quality of service. Keep studying and practicing your skills and I'll see you ninjas in the next video. As always, y'all, please share like the video subscribe all that stuff turn me up it really helps out helps me uh stay motivated creating these videos and everything it helps the algorithms and all that there you know how this goes i'm a holler peace